Alright guys, what's going on? Today we have the Chinese motherboard that Tech Your City has been talking about and uh, crapping all over. And we also have a little bit of a trick up our sleeves. We have a Lianli AIO, a 360mm cooler with a copper cord plate and uh, we have this copper block that we've already removed. It just needs a triangle bit screwdriver so it's really finicky but you can get it with the standard Xiaomi kit of screwdrivers that you can uh, grab off the internet for next to nothing. It's one of these. Oh uh, yeah, these will do you enough uh, with the tri head bit, that will fit perfectly. And the screws are attached fairly loose so they come out quite easily. And uh, what you'll do now is, you take this, you run a bit of nail polish on the sides and then after it's kind of dried out you can scrape off the, uh, the edges that overlap with the copper with your fingers or a uh, very fine razor or a piece of plastic card which is probably better since this is copper and quite soft. Okay, so um, what you can do with this is we'll apply some liquid metal really quick and uh, off of that We'll be able to really do some overclocking here and see uh, how cool this thing runs on stock, at least. And uh, even if overclocking is working now. So the first releases, they were pretty buggy. They had a couple of issues, like memory, you couldn't set any timings on. You didn't have to run default JDEC. And uh, it's, it's a bit of a funny board on release. But they've really upgraded it here. There's a new heat sinks, I think. This should be a new BIOS revision as well. Uh, it's very, very well shielded on the PCIe slot. You got a... Good layout here, you got Wi-Fi, NVMe, NVMe, and a uh, really beefy Southbridge heatsink. And at least you got a little expansion slot if you want an external PCIe, maybe sound or USB, either of those. And yeah, just in case the onboard is not up to your scratch, obviously you have the option there. So Wi-Fi obviously would be the most obvious choice for a lot of people. Love uh, using Wi-Fi in uh, these parts. And yeah, even though cable is sometimes steadier and uh, well it is higher input lag but you get a much more steady hit ridge in a lot of cases and um, yeah, USB and let's see PCIe Wi-Fi is a bit hit or miss depending on the range to your router but if you're close by it's a little bit of an advantage because you get less input lag but, yeah, it's a very case by case basis and you have to have a good Wi-Fi like that but what I prefer usually is putting some uh, maybe PCIe sound the onboard sound usually is garbage on most motherboards. It doesn't matter what kind of motherboard you buy, the sound is going to nearly always be garbage. So yeah, uh, this has pretty decent built-in sound. It's not bad. It's just real tech stuff to be honest. It's always very default. So, yeah, we've already cleaned this up with a bit of alcohol. I'm just going to skip all that process and show the really juicy part here, which is going to look at metal correctly. And it's very simple. You run a bead across it. And then clean up the excess simply by dragging the tip of the uh, cotton swab bit. Of course, you want to clean up the edges and any overspill you want to clean up as well. Be careful not to flick your cotton bud and not to flick any liquid metal from the actual tube itself because that is quite critical. If you go a little bit over the edge, that's okay, you can wipe it off and uh, yeah, just be very careful not to spill anything. Yeah, that's a very clean application. There's a little bit of a smudge on the side here. We'll just clean this up with the uh, the side of the cotton bud. Maybe even a new one. Oh, that's all right. Yeah. And the critical thing to have here yeah, is maybe have a small bag to store all your used cotton buds, so you can dispose of them cleanly. You don't want liquid metal to stain your desk. You don't want it to stain anything. Not your clothes. Not the CPU. Not your work desk, not any aluminium heat sinks especially. So there you go, we've got all this cleaned up, we've got all the edges cleaned up, there's no thermal paste on this whatsoever. You just use a bit of limonene first and then a, uh, a bit of, you know, alcohol. It's very easy. So there's the back plate, and this is the board. Now we're going to apply it onto this as well. As always, a little bit goes a while, and uh, well, you can have a too little, but you got to make sure at least that the plates are flat if you want to use small amounts of liquid metal. Otherwise you need a tiny bit extra to fill in the gap for some. Okay, so we're going to do that. And we are going to run a bead. And spread it out in circular motion. Don't be too fast here, because uh, this stuff does flick around pretty easily. Liquid metal is uh, quite dangerous in that respect. So we're just going to really quickly apply this here. It's very simple work. Once you've done the prep work, it's a very quick and easy process. And uh, since this this is the biggest concern, because the block is made out of aluminium, hence why we are using as little as possible liquid metal 
and also avoiding any kind of spillage there. That's why we have everything masked off with a layer of nail polish, because this is an aluminium block around the edge. Copper is only in the middle. And clean up any excess, and that's just resting on the bit of nail polish here, so we'll be fine. All right. So we're not going to do too much cleanup work on that, because you don't want to spill it off on the edge. And uh, we're just going to leave it as is. That looks really good. It's going to have a good mating uh, <clears throat> thickness. And uh, yeah, it looks really clean. We'll just flip this around. And simply drop it on the board after aligning it with the holes. Obviously. And carefully lift it into place. Now we go to the other side and grab our triangular screws. Which are really tilting to use. Since all the back plate, this is a very, very simple design. It's honestly, I like this more than most other designs out there for uh, even just standard sockets. This is better than that. And yeah, we're just gonna hold up the socket, we're gonna hold up the CPU cold plate, and we're gonna stick another finger in the middle of the board to balance it so it won't flip over and cause a mess. I'm gonna put one screw in the corner here, very well, nearly carefully. And we're gonna also find a screwdriver to actually use. One unqualified technician letter, we're going to this block in. One side, we're going to do the other two. Now these are just standard, I think, uh, M3. You can find these really anywhere. It's played by 1.0 or something. I'm not too sure exactly what it is, but... Yeah, this is, well, I hate triads because they're really, really hard to align. And you're not going to find the right bit for them in my opinion, at least, screw kits. I think this is the... Yeah, this is the Nintendo security screw. If you remember the BS days, this is what we used to use. Really, really annoying. Yeah, so that's nice and tight. That's nice and tight. That's secure. And uh, you want to feel the liquid metal kind of just grip onto the CPU by itself. It has a lot of surface tension, so when you mate this properly and there's nothing blocking the mating surfaces, then uh, it will self-adhere. Kind of like a film of water if you had two really flat surfaces. Or if you had gauge blocks. Okay. That's all done, skis. But we don't want it too tight. We want to be able to remove this in the future if we need to mate it. Okay, that's good. Okay. Alright, so, there we go, we've applied liquid metal to a Erying motherboard, whatever it's called, or how you pronounce it, I'm not too sure, but uh, yeah, that's that. We'll attach the cooler, which is very simple, we're just going to use some uh, GD900, or maybe some MX here. I think this is going to be um, more of a permanent insulation, obviously, so, since the top here is going to be very, very hard to coat, we're going to use thermal paste, we're not going to go the full mile, because it's going to be too risky. If any of that liquid metal spills onto the aluminium, it's a bit of a game over. So yeah, you have to be very careful with this. But they do a really good job of machining this nearly completely flat. You can see that um, even on the aluminium part, it's perfectly flat. My reflections are, well, nearly mirror perfect. Especially on the copper slug here. Look at my hand. That's crazy. I put an optical flat on that, and it's going to be like completely flat. Alright, enough dilly dally. Let's get some MX4 on this. Very simple. Thermal paste. I'm going to suck it back in the tube a bit, and we're going to close it. Alright, so, now that's done, let's clean up our rubbish. Let's keep a tidy workspace, obviously. And we're going to seal back our liquid metal. Do not do this over the motherboard, do this on the side, so you don't spill any liquid metal when you accidentally flick it. Okay. Get our Leon Lee AIO. Alright, so, obviously, we're going to install this kind of to the front here, so... What we're gonna do it's gonna be something like this. This is a AMD style mount, and it's a very standard and cheap mount that you can get on AliExpress. It comes with a lot of cores. I just have tons of these lying around, and this perfectly mounts the Leon Lee interface, which is great. This came off of a Ryzen motherboard, so it was originally designed to cool a 5800X3D, but the the owner got a core circular, so we're gonna use this instead. Or pulling this setup. Now the uh, the chokes here are a little bit high, that's no problem. And the cabling is a bit of a pain to navigate. But yeah, we're okay, we're okay. Okay, uh, a little bit of an issue. The pipes are getting blocked on this side. Yeah, we might need to do some rectification here. But I'm... Off. Don't be too appalled, this is very standard.
Okay. That comes out. Obviously, don't use it if you don't have a Xiaomi screwdriver. This is specifically a very dull back end with no, um, you know, bits sticking out of it. I'm gonna lose a bit of focus there. Alright. Next. Very, very simple modification. I don't think you're gonna see this coming, but this is what we're gonna do with this. We're gonna cut this. Yep. Piece of a uh, cable cutter. We're gonna slice this off. And slice this bit off. There you go. There is our cooler mount. <laughs> there you go. Welcome to my computer store. That's what we do here. Okay, so that's installed again. Now, that's the fastest reinstall in history. Let's get rid of that piece of plastic, which serves no function whatsoever, then impede our progress. I'm going to lay this carefully on a flat surface so it doesn't bend any fins. And now we are going to reinsert the cooler. Obviously, carefully. I'm going to lift this a tiny bit. Try to pop this thing up. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah. Okay, take two with the uh, different snap ring. Hopefully this one will work a bit better. Obviously, yes, this one works. The other one was just garbage. Okay. Loosen this and try to turn down two sides even though. And that will really allow us to get a good grip on this. Okay, so this is as tight as it goes. Now, so obviously it looks like a really loose fit, but that should hold it well into place. Now, if I unscrew this a bit, you can see that the spring is actually still contacting the cooler, so there is certainly a spring pressure applied here. So I'm gonna keep that extra tight. This side as well. Now we gotta Pretty decent cooler installed. Okay, now we can test this. <laughs> awesome. So yeah, it's all done. It's all sitting here. Let me show some benchmarks. So overall, guys, highly recommend this motherboard. It is a. Uh, it, it works great. Uh, the, the memory XMP. So long as you have the matching memory kit, does apply and it does work. And you can tighten the timings like I've done here. I've got these running at um, 3200 seal. Uh, 14 and obviously setting to the right ratios according to the 1.5 3.5 ratio and uh, cast latency being the 1 to 1.5 to 3.5 This game is 150 players We get faster over time We play the normal card is going to run quicker This is running um, 3440 by 1440p and you got your 27 inch monitor somewhere over <laughs> this i9 quotation mark quotation mark works well as intended. Uh, there's even some BCLK feature that I haven't really bothered to meddle with. Uh, since the power limit is obviously dictated by the VRMs and they do get quite warm, Tokyo City is not wrong about that. But uh, do they get above 90 degrees on the stock PL settings? Uh, I would say no, they run fine as is. And uh, if you are able to tweak a little bit with those settings down and get the right power limit set, it runs beautifully, it runs really, really fast. So yeah, uh, overall thumbs up from me, I definitely would consider building more of these. This is the second one that I've built, and uh, the first one, the customer was really happy. The second one, the customer was like, get me the fastest, the best value board you can. I was like, alright, I mean, it's $300 for an i9 motherboard with the CPU installed and uh, with the actual cooling block and everything, so really nothing that was so fast. A $300 i9 and motherboard. So, check it out on AliExpress. I am not sponsored by any of these suppliers in the video. Alright guys, hope you enjoyed that video. It took me a little bit of a while to pull together, but that was one of my builds that I do on the regular. And it was a Lianli 360mm AIO build in a uh, Lianli styled case from Dark Flash. And uh, it, it really turned out quite nice in my own opinion. 
my humble opinion. And um, obviously, I had a few mounting issues at the start, but I rectified all of that by adding some extra spring tension as well to the cooler. Initially, the uh, the cooler would mount, but the contact wasn't proper, like thousand percent, right? So you had to put a little bit of extra spring tension with uh, an extra spring that I salvaged off a. Uh, a broken graphics card or a fan bearing and using that I was able to get it to seat properly and the maximum temperatures on these were only hitting about um, seriously low like 69 to 70 degrees on a 4.4 gigahertz all core gaming load and uh, what it does is that it automatically boosts to about 100 watts and then after it hits 100 watts it will throttle down to a limit that I set in the BIOS and it does take a lot of uh, finessing you need to go to the BIOS and uh, enable the overclock mode and there's a ton of different settings that you need to turn on and off uh, in order to get those uh, TDP user TDP limits and uh, power limits to work so that was one of the uh, biggest challenges but I managed to get that all working 65 watts I think was the throttle limit that I set for uh, PL2 and PL1 was at a uh, 100 watts so this was easily boosting to 4.4 across the the board here for all eight cores and 16 threads in a game like Warzone and it kept it well below 60 degrees in that kind of load and when it actually hit AVX2 it would still go maximum up to about 70 degrees on uh, just the thermal paste and liquid metal interface that I had on the CPU at the end there so I was using MX4 paste I was using uh, Thermal Grizzly Liquid Metal, and uh, yeah, it really turned out quite nicely. I had um, the the Gigabyte video card, I'd also repasted and repadded with uh, Thermal Write equivalents of uh, Thermal Pads, and the same for the uh, the actual heat sinks on the motherboard, but I thought I'd caught a lot of that on video, but I've since somehow lost the footage. Um, uh, yeah, all it was was uh, figuring out how to get the memory speed running at 3200 MHz and you have to have the exact correct kit. Um, I think it didn't matter too much but you needed Hynix either CJR or DJR and uh, Micron EDI. Those are the only two types that I could get working with the XMP profile that this board supports. Any custom memory speed doesn't seem to apply properly. So uh, if you want 3200 MHz, get a 3200 MHz kit. They sell it themselves in the store and you can get your uh, hands on any old Micron EDI kit or um, uh, they used to call it Crucial Ballistics or uh, something else like say from Team Extreme, the 3200 series from Dev. Worked fairly well, at the white kit in there, it works beautifully. So yeah, uh, if you like this, please drop a like, uh, otherwise I'll drop liquid metal on your motherboard. So, please take care, and obviously, be careful when you're doing things like this, especially when there's aluminium around the copper slug on the actual CPU cooling block. Alright, take care, I'll see you in the next video.